Hello and welcome to MailTrap Videos, where we explore the world of emails. In this video, we'll guide you through creating a JavaScript contact form with custom validations and a pop-up interface. Let's begin by setting a basic HTML structure. Next, in the body, we'll add the HTML code for the contact form. For convenience, you can find this basic HTML structure in our blog post linked in the description. The contact form also includes a unique ID. This allows you to interact with the form in JavaScript. We also include a hidden block for displaying error messages inside the form. Furthermore, each label is wrapped in a form row block for styling, and a required attribute is added for input validation. So this is what our plain HTML form looks like. To make it visually appealing, let's inject some CSS. First, we add the style block to the HTML structure, and then paste the CSS code, enhancing the spacing between rows and differentiating inputs from labels. Let's also add a dash of color to our error messages. With these basic styles added, our form sheds its plain HTML appearance and looks more refined. Nice. This styling is just a basic demonstration that illustrates how simple changes can improve the form's layout. CSS offers great flexibility for further customization, enabling you to tailor the form to your design preferences and brand identity. Next, let's improve our contact form by integrating it into a pop-up. First, we need to add a pop-up container in the body of the HTML structure and then nest our form inside it. We also need to add the CSS for the pop-up to our style tag. All right, so this is what our form looks like now. Next, a sprinkle of JavaScript does the trick to animate the pop-up. For that to happen, we need to add two functions that will show and hide the pop-up. But before we paste the functions, let's quickly create a script tag and indicate the type as JavaScript. Now, to trigger these actions, we need to include a button. Here, we've added event listeners to the button for opening the pop-up and to the entire document for listening to the escape key to close the pop-up. We did this inside a DOM content loaded event block. This ensures that our JavaScript code only runs after the entire HTML document has been fully loaded, allowing us to interact with all the elements, including our newly added button and form. All right, let's test it out. Click the button and voila, our form pops up. And when we press escape, it goes away. Now, let's see how we can add validations to our form with some custom logic. The default validation works in the following way. The user tries submitting the form. The required attribute picks up that the required form fields are empty. An error message is displayed. We can modify this behavior by adding a submit listener, which is triggered when the form is submitted. Now, this listener will try to validate the form, and if the content is invalid, it will show the error message. Additionally, we need to remove the default required attributes. All right, now we can implement the custom logic with functions that validate the email format and the phone number format. The email validation function will check if the email input matches a standard email format using a regular expression. Similarly, the phone number validation function will ensure that the phone number input meets a specific format, also using a regular expression. The last piece of our custom validation is handling the display of error messages. We create a function called display error that takes an error message and displays it in our form's error message block. Now, let's see all of this in action. We submit the form and we get our error message. Remember, client-side validations are useful, but this does not always guarantee that the server will receive valid data. So make sure to always verify any client input on the server side. And for better validations, look into well-established solutions. For example, one like Yup. Lastly, let's quickly boost our form security with Google's reCAPTCHA system that helps web hosts distinguish between humans and bots. 
First, we must add the standard recapture script to our file. And to our form, we add the form row class. Let's see how it looks in the form. And there is our recapture. One last thing to note is that server-side code is essential for the full functionality of recapture. In this tutorial, we focused on the front-end aspect, as back-end integration depends on each website's specific server setup and requirements. Remember, JavaScript running in a web browser can't directly communicate with an SMTP server, so a server-side language is required to handle the actual form submission. For more insights into this, check out our other videos where we dive into sending emails using various languages and frameworks. And this wraps up our guide on creating a JavaScript contact form. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by MailTrap, an email delivery platform to test, send, and control your email infrastructure in one place. Like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications to see more tutorials like this one, and I will see you in the next one.